7. Mark Cummings at breakfast. Hey, morning. Welcome to a Monday. On the way, selling the cuts and life with the Lib Dems. Tory party conference in full swing today. It's a good mix and it's um, allowed us to you know, start actually tackling the deficit and actually get on with sorting out the country. Thinking for yourself, the new driving test could prove rather interesting. And after Gloucester Thump Bath, do you remember we did that on Friday night? We have a week looking at rivalry within Gloucestershire. King Stanley used to think they were superior to Lena Stanley. Oh, is that true? Right, and I'll just stir it all morning long. What about the weather? Bits and pieces of mist and fog around. That's a legacy of that damp ground from yesterday, certainly. And we do have some cloud around as well, which is beginning to thin and break. But temperature's already in double figures, so it's a mild start to the day. What about the roads? We have a broken down van on Crickley Hill, or do we still? We do indeed. It's about halfway up, taking out the inside lane. So what with that and patches of fog in the area could cause you some delays this morning. With the morning sport today revving up for an extra day at the Ryder Club, Blackpool Rock at Anfield, and can Gloucester utilise the Bath feel-good factor? We might well get a sense of that today as well. From Cooper's Hill to Coley Peak, from Podmead to Purton. Just about every front page today talking about cuts and the Chancellor. Tory activists prefer Clegg to most of their own cabinet ministers, says the Independent today. The, Gar the Guardian, Osborne, cuts must be fast and deep to avoid a decade of debt. The Times, cut now or face a decade of debt. Decade of debt seems to be the word that's gone into the media and we're all picking it up. Middle class to feel the pink, says the Western Daily. And the Mail today, end for middle class benefits is their front page. Yeah, the Chancellor. Councillor George Osborne, the main speaker at the Conservative Conference in Birmingham today, as the government finalises plans for reducing public spending. The other big talking points for delegates is how sharing power with the Lib Dems seems to be working out. Speak to our political correspondent, Paul Baltrop, who's at the conference for us in a moment. But first, Michael Findlay and Mireille Weller are both Conservative Party activists from Cheltenham. What do they make of the coalition six months on? I think the Conservatives and the Lib Dems have been working well together in the coalition and this is one thing I want to see actually strengthened by the conference. There's been talk at the Lib Dem conference of their MPs being negative about the coalition, but overall the the overall agreement over the party seems to be that it's actually a good thing and that appears to be on both sides. Where the Lib Dems obviously have put their foot down and said we can't support this, the Conservative Party has said, you know, fine. So it's a good mix and it's um, allowed us to you know, start actually tackling the deficit and actually get on with sorting out the country as such. It's a bit interesting. Um, I don't think the Lib Dems are actually going to come out of this particularly well, just because they are such a junior partner in it. But I think it's actually do, doing the Conservatives a world of good, because in some ways it's making them think more centrally about policies. So sort of bringing left and right together. Well, let's go to the conference. And our political correspondent for the West is Paul Boltrop. He's there for us now. Paul, morning to you. What, what's the mood been like over the last 24 hours? I'd say generally fairly positive. To a degree, they're putting on a brave face because nobody's in really exultant mood. The election result, after all, wasn't exactly what they wanted. They didn't get the overall majority they'd have hoped for. And the programme that their government, in coalition with the Lib Dems, has set about doing is pretty grim work indeed. But having said all that, you know, no one's unhappy because, after all, it's been 14 years since they last met at conference as the party of government. So, generally, they're in pretty chipper mood. Well, we have plenty represented here from Gloucestershire. I know you'll be speaking to them over the next few days. What about the worries, Paul, about the cuts could alienate voters? Well, that is the big talking point. We've got George Osborne, the Chancellor, who's going to be making his big speech later on this morning. And everyone is you know, sort of hanging on to see what he's going to say, whether he's going to give much away. There's a great battle going on, which we've heard a bit about over the last week or so, between George Osborne, it seems, and the Defence Secretary, Liam Fox, because as Fox is desperately trying to hold on to as much of his defence budget as possible. The Chancellor is saying, look, you're going to have to take your share of the cuts like everyone else. It's interesting to see Liam Fox around the conference yesterday evening looking, well, fairly confident in spite of the fact that, you know, as some say he's been probably given a bit of a dressing down by senior figures, maybe even David Cameron. We know that they have talked along the way. So that's one of the tensions that's going there. What's going to happen to, to welfare and to benefits? We're expecting to see a, some revolutionary changes indeed. That's what the government has built it as. But, you know, maybe Maybe the odd snippet, maybe the odd bit of good news. One thing which would appeal to you actually was that yesterday 
afternoon in the conference hall, trying to sort of latch on to some of the things that aren't just as miserable and relentlessly gloomy about cuts. They talked about ridiculous health and safety rules. And in so doing, they mentioned cheese rolling and said, isn't it dreadful that the cheese rolling was cancelled this year? And the conference all warmly applauded and hurrahed that one, of course. And then spoiled it all by referring to the cheese rolling in Wiltshire. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I don't know where they thought that was. Right, I'll talk to Mark Harper about that at 8 o'clock. Cheese rolling in Wiltshire. I hope he did something about that. That's that right. That'll be your phone. One quick question and cohabitation with the Lib Dems. There has been some grumbling in the weekend papers on this one. Well, do you know, the further down the... The, uh, the party structure you go, the more likely they are to grumble. But at the top level, they're pretty cheerful, they're pretty hopeful. And I have to say, you know, in the hall yesterday, William Hague made, made a very, very big sort of speech and talked about the fact that the coalition was unarguably the right thing to do for our country, he said. He paid tribute to Nick Clegg. There was quite a lot of applause for that. And I think this is part of the function of this conference, to pep up morale, to boost them, and to make sure that they, you know, keep the faith with the coalition. Paul, thank you. We'll catch up with Paul throughout the conference, of course, talking to some of our local MPs. Mark Harper, MP for the Forest of Dean, will be with me just after 8 o'clock today. Cheltenham, Presbury and Cholton Kings. Wherever you are, you're with BBC Radio Gloucestershire. FM, AM and iPlayer. BBC Radio.